Good morning, Vertical. We are so glad that you are joining with us this morning. You're tuning in. We're so excited, the fact that you are taking the time to join us. We're really just so blessed. Uh, and we just want to encourage you today that if you would just take a moment to share uh, our service this morning to your friends and family on social media, would you just take a moment to do that? We would love for them to join us. We got something, a lot of exciting things in store for you. We just know that God is going to do something amazing. Jane? Uh, thank you, Pastor. Uh, this week, I know Rocky's going to be talking about today, mistakes. And we're going to dive into the Bible and, and go over that, guys. But there's good news because we can be forgiven, right? And our mistakes are in the past and they can stay there as long as we repent and turn from them. But uh, also, we got Connect Group this week. Connect Group starting back up. So if you aren't with a group, please sign up. Make sure that you get connected. Uh, you know, the phone number below, call that phone number, and then we'll also get you connected. Uh, I'm going to read a verse right now and a little bit about giving us hope. Hope in these times and how we're going to be able to get through this with Christ. Uh, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. So guys, as we're out in the wasteland, as it looks like in this desert, and there's things, chaos going on all around us, God is letting us know, don't dwell on those paths. Don't dwell on the bad stuff because He will prevail. He's going to deliver us, guys. That's right. He will. That's that right. is a promise He made to us. All right. Well, I think we're ready. And um, Shane, go ahead and just lead us the word of prayer. So we just want to encourage you to engage with us. And uh, we are about to start worship. And so as Shane prays, we just want to encourage you, engage with us, stand with us, and then uh, just allow Shane to lead us in prayer and then engage in worship. Shane, go right ahead. Dear Lord, Father, we come to you, God, in our own homes. We don't have to be in, in the church to be present with you. Father, we pray that you just meet us at, our, at where we're at, Lord. Father, we thank you for the love that you continue to pour out on us. Father, we thank you for just being there, God. I mean, when we need a friend, we can call on you. When we need somebody to talk to, Lord, you're there. And God, I just pray that in our hearts, we can feel the deliverance that you are going to uh, give us, Father, and bring to us. Lord, give us peace and help us to turn away from our wickedness, Lord. On you. Yes. We ask yes, Father God. in all this to stand up, guys. Yes. Put your hands up. Come on. Let's come on. praise Jesus. Yeah. Come on. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. And God bless you.
up your name Jesus Jesus Ooh. Ooh. We worship your name
in bringing you praise everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all heart and my soul would I give you control consume me from the inside out Lord let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside Yeah.
on just every person that are watching right now let's just lift up our hands to him and let's just right now for just a moment just to cry out and worship God we worship you we honor you today you are the everlasting God you are in control you know all things you are sovereign you are God you are good you are faithful you are amazing God we love you today we bless your holy name you are the great I am you are the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end you are the creator of all things the creator of the heavens and the earth you, you have created the heavens God you have created the mountains you have created the seas and everything in it you are God who's who is seated on the throne you are high and lifted up and we worship you this morning God we thank you Jesus you are the son of the living God you are the Lord and you are the Savior you said in your word that you are the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through you God thank you for loving us the fact that you have said in your word that for God so love us for God so love the world that he gave his one and only son Jesus for whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life Wow God thank you for your love thank you that your love is so high and so deep and so wide thank you for watching over us thank you for providing thank you for your strength and healing thank you for ministering to us with joy and peace that surpasses understanding in Jesus name in Jesus name and everyone said amen and amen and amen we just want to transition a little bit into our uh, giving we want to just give you an opportunity to engage in, in investing through new life as we continue to impact our communities and those that are in need of our help I just want to let you know that I'm so excited about this uh, uh, there's a, a school locally that we are in partnership with and the principal uh, con con uh, gave me gave me an email sent me an email this week and said pastor Angelo is there's a way to help this uh, child that live in one of the motels in your community and uh, uh, this kid uh, uh, as we as as you already know uh, that they are not going to school uh, the building and that they are doing online and so um, this kid for the last five weeks haven't been able to join or go to school online and so the principal said is there's a way to help them with uh, with uh, Wi-Fi and set them up and guess what because of your giving we we're able to help little Malachi and so Malachi today is able to to do uh, school because of your giving that's right because of your giving uh, and one other thing that I think is kind of cool to um, that I don't want you to miss out so uh, because we had been delivering uh, groceries every week to the community and just telling them that we love them that we're thinking about them and that we are praying for them well uh, Sparks Christian Fellowship uh, gave me a call and and, and gave us uh, uh, an offering so that we can purchase some more of groceries and give them out to our uh, to the families in our community and so a couple of uh, our church members went with me at Costco and we were uh, just putting all these canned goods and stuff like that and two big uh, carts were full of food and people were looking and like okay we're not hoarding we're buying stuff for our community the families that are in need and so then a, a friend uh, from another church saw me and and ask what we were doing I told him about that and so then uh, he left and then comes back about half an hour looking for me and he said hey uh, pastor Angelo God bless you for what what you and your church are doing I want to just uh, uh, put a seat and puts a hundred bucks right there uh, in, in addition to what we have received from Sparse Christian Fellowship and then here's the coolest part of the story and so we went to and getting ready to pay for this and the cashier at Costco uh, asked what we were doing and so I told her about this and so when we were getting ready to pay she pulls out her debit card 
and swipes her debit card and she said to me pastor I hope you don't mind me paying for some of it seriously wow that, and that that is just amazing the fact that God sees it all he's providing and the fact is guys is that because of your investment and your faithfulness and your obedience in giving what belongs to God your tithes we're able to impact so many people so I wanna to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for your faithfulness and continue to engage in giving friends continue to engage because we have the greatest opportunity to impact so many with the love of Jesus let me pray father we are just grateful for the opportunity to give what belongs to you and to say God I'm going to obey you with my tithes and I'm going to give it to the church and invest it through the vertical and so God I pray that you will bless those that are obedient and bless the giving this Sunday we love you God and continue to use us to impact so many people with the gospel of Jesus Christ we love you today in Jesus name amen thank you for investing right here at Vertical Church. God bless you.
Well, I want to take an opportunity to welcome you wherever you're at, wherever you're listening to this message. The cool part about being in a, a church at home is that we can have people all over the world listening to this message right now, which, which I think is, is awesome. There's not a lot of people in this room right now, but all over the world we could be ministering to somebody. So before I start, I, I just hope you had a great week. I hope things went well. If you're working, if you're not working with the kids at home and all that fun teaching stuff, I want you to share this message. Take a moment, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on the church online, you might have a Facebook link. Go ahead and, and, and share this message with somebody. We believe that God is going to use these messages in such a powerful way to touch not only you, but to touch this world. And who knows, your sharing could really make an impact on somebody all across the world. Uh, you never know. Somebody, uh, as far as you could think of, could hear this message and accept Christ, and it's because you decided to share this message on Facebook or however you share things on, on social media. Hey, last week, Pastor did an awesome, good job knowing God through, through those tough times, knowing God through the struggles. Today, I want to talk about knowing God through failure, and I would love to say that I never had an opportunity to fail. I would love to say, well, I'm just perfect that I never failed at anything. But if my wife was here, she'd be shaking her head because she knows that does, that's not true. There's a lot of times that I failed. Uh, some, some sad news, sort of. My father-in-law passed away a couple weeks ago, on, on Tuesday a couple weeks ago. And just last week, we had the opportunity to go to his funeral. And uh, there was only 10 of us, so... Don't yell at us. There's only 10 of us at the funerals, at the graveside, and we were, we were sitting there, and, and everybody started telling stories about dad, and, I, and some of those stories were incredible. So I get up there, and I start telling stories, and I'm crying, and I, I can't even get through it, and, and I remember dad helping me build my addition. I remember dad loving to play tennis. I, I remember dad loving to, to eat whenever that we had an opportunity to eat ice cream especially or, or sweets. He just loved sweets. He used to say that I, I want to eat dessert first because you never know if Jesus is going to come back. I thought that was so cool. And then somebody that was sitting there said, and he loved the water ski. And I thought for a minute, this is, doesn't really have a lot to do with my message. I, I just wonder for a minute if in heaven he had that opportunity maybe to take up water skiing once again. Well, I, I've known the family for about 30 years. And when I first started dating Debbie, uh, dad had a boat. And so we would go out water skiing. And it took me a while, but eventually I was able to get up and skiing on two skis and, and doing whatever I was supposed to be doing. I had a great time. And, and then I looked around the boat, or I looked as people were out on the water, and they were all on one ski. And I thought to myself, I want to do that. I, I want to get out on white, one ski. So I, uh, I, I dropped one ski and went out there. And I tried. And I tried. And I tried over and over. I can't tell you how much of Lake Berryessa and the Delta that I drank trying to learn how to ski on one ski because when the boat took off, I'd fall over, but I wasn't smart enough to let go. So I just kept trying and trying and trying. Here's the deal. My family in the boat kept telling me, you got this, Rock. Next time, you got this. Do this. They would tell me this and do, you know, push here and push there and all these things. And, and once again, I'd get out there and fall. And i maybe get up a little bit and then fall. And then I took about maybe four or five weeks of just going every once in a while until one day the sun must have been shining right and, and God was smiling on me because for a, a moment I got up. And I was like, wow, now I know why everybody wants to ski on one ski. It was incredible for about five seconds that I fell. And so I, I, I failed over and over and over and over again, but I really didn't fail. I was learning how not to get up on one ski. I was practicing. I was figuring it out. And some people could say, Rocky, you're just a failure. No, you're, I wasn't failing. I was learning. And I hope that today, as I go through this message, that you get it into your spirit, never to give up, never to stop, never to slow down, but to say, I want you to take this with you. Failing isn't fatal until you give up. I want to say that again. Failure isn't fatal 
until you quit. That's the moment that it's fatal. That's the moment that you die. That's the moment that something stops. I'm so glad that Thomas Edison with the light bulb didn't give up. I'm so glad that Steve Jobs and his group with the iPhone didn't give up. I'm so glad that people kept on going and didn't stop with a little bit of failure. And I know there's a lot of people sitting out there today saying, but pastor, you don't understand. There's so much difficulty in life. There's so many things that I, that I fail at. Well, I want you to know God is with you even during those times of failure. God is with you even during those times of failure. We sometimes forget this and we think, I'm all by myself and I need to do this all alone. But that's not true. God is with you through those times where you think you're failing the most, most God is serving you. And, and the title of the message is failure. Uh, the failure doesn't have to be fatal, but also knowing God through those times where we struggled, when we fail, when we fall, when we don't do what God has called us to do. I believe that a lot of things in life we fail because we forget that God is with us and he has a plan for our lives and he wants us to do something. You know, you know Moses was in the, uh, had the nation of Israel in the wilderness and they were, they were trapped in the wilderness for, for many years and then one day they were allowed to come out of the wilderness and cross the Jordan and go into the land of promise. Now Moses, he couldn't go there. He couldn't travel with them because he did something in the land of Israel or in the, in the, in the, this, the wilderness and he was not allowed to go with them over the Jordan into the land of promise but Joshua was. Joshua was Moses's mentor. Moses mentored him and, and, and Joshua was allowed to cross and lead this nation into the land of promise. And I want to read to you from Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. So this is the time where you could run and get your Bibles maybe or, or grab your phone, a pencil and a piece of paper possibly. You all have notes on your phone. That you're at home. There should be no reason to not get a Bible or, or get something to take notes with. Uh, we're going to be in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 and I, I think most of these are going to be up on the screen but if not, you can read them in your Bible. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. Listen to this. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God said, don't be afraid. Don't be frightened. Don't be nervous about what you're supposed to do. I am with you always. I love that part because it wasn't that I'm supposed to go and take this nation of Israel all by myself. No, God said, look, I am going to be with you wherever you go. I am not going to leave you abandoned. I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. I can tell you what, those times when I feel frightened the most is those times when I forget that God is right there next to me. And that's when I fall on my face and it's so hard to get up. I, I just forget sometimes that God is there. And so Joshua takes this whole nation of Israel into the promised land and the first thing that they run into is Jericho. And God says, okay, or Jer Joshua says, God, what should I do? And God says, here's the plan. I want you to march around the city seven times, and then when I, when I say go, the, the priests are going to blow the trumpet, and everybody's going to shout, and the walls are going to come down. Joshua's probably thinking, okay, sounds like a pretty good plan. And they did it. And Jericho, praise the Lord, came tumbling. Those walls, the Bible said, came tumbling down. Yay for Joshua. He was able to listen Parents, kids, listen, your parents, that you might not think they're smart, but they're pretty smart. When they tell you something, listen to them. They know what they're talking about. So Josh, God's talk, talking to Joshua. Joshua does what, does what he's supposed to do, and the walls of Jericho come tumbling down. So then the nation of Israel goes a little bit further and they, they keep on walking and, and in the midst of this walking they come against this land a lot smaller, the city of Ahai. AI. That's how, that's how you say it. AI. AI. That's it. And Joshua goes, hey, I'm going to send some spies, go look at the land, and you tell me how we should attack these people. So the spies come back and says, look, Joshua, we got this. That's, that could be a frightening term sometimes. We got this. Don't bother the whole army. Just send about 3,000 guys up there, and we'll take the city, and we'll completely 
destroy it. We, we, we don't need to worry about sending a, a whole army up there. We got this. We don't need everybody. So they go up there and they attack the city and unbeknownst to them, Ai wasn't as weak as they thought and the, the people from Ai came out and they attacked the Israelites, killing, the Bible says, killing 36 of them. I, I want to read this. Let's go to Joshua chapter 7, verse number 4. They, they went to Ai, they attacked it, and now the Ai people are coming out attacking them. Ai, or Joshua chapter 7, verse 4 says this. So about 3,000 went up, but they were routed by the men of Ai, who killed about 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted in fear, melted in fear, became, and they became like water. The, the people of Israel, they, they just brought down Jericho. They go to Ai. They attack Ai. Ai, Ai comes out and attacks them. And, and now they're running away, and many of their people, 36 is a lot back then, 36 is a lot today, died in that, that battle. And, and so Joshua must be thinking to himself, what did I do wrong? How did I, let's use the word, fail? How did I fail in this situation? So instead of saying, it's probably my fault, instead of saying, I should have went to God, he starts questioning God. Now let me ask you a question. When you fail, when something goes wrong, when everything doesn't go to your way, who's the first person we seem to blame sometimes? I'm not going to say it, but a lot of us say, oh, I guess I am going to say it. God, why? God, why are you doing this? God, why are you putting me through this? When it, it might not have anything to do with God, it might have everything to do with us saying, hey, we got this. We don't need you, God. We're going to do it on our own. So Joshua chapter 7, 7 says this. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why have you brought the people over the Jordan at all to give us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Would that we have been content to dwell in the Jordan? So Joshua starts bargaining with God, asking God, saying, look, why did you bring us here if we're just going to die? And then the Lord reveals something to uh, Joshua that is pretty interesting. He says, when you attack Jericho, I told your people, you and your people, to leave all the items in Jericho, the idols, alone. But one of your men, Achan, took one of those idols, and that is the reason why you were not, you did not succeed when you went to attack Ahi. And Joshua says, okay, let me take care of this situation. Long story, long story in the Bible, shorter. He goes, he, he searches the whole nation of Israel, and he finds that the tribe of Achan does have this idol, and they stone him, and they, get, they completely destroy that family. And then Joshua, guess what? Now that he heard from God, has the answer from God, knows how to attack, goes at the Ai, and they completely destroy it. You see, when God is on our side, and we know that God is there, we are able to do things, incredible things. When we try to go on our own and by ourselves, there are times when we're going to fail because we haven't inquired what God has in our lives. And listen, church, the sin in Achan, the sin in the camp was the reason why they, didn't, they weren't able to accomplish what they were supposed to accomplish. And so I want to call out to you, if you're continually failing, if you're continually falling, if you are not succeeding, in life, you might need to look inside and say, Lord, is there something that I did? Is there something inside of me that needs to be cleansed in order for me to keep on going forward? You might be watching today. You may have stumbled by this and you've never seen, uh, you've never even seen the Bible or read the Bible. You know what the Bible says? God loves you so much. God is for you in such an incredible way, but he wants one thing. He wants you to change, to serve him, to turn your life, to focus your life on him, to turn from that sin and, and, and start serving him. And guess what? You may fail in life, you may fall in life, but when you fall in life, God is going to help you up. God is going to lift you up. When I say these words, uh, think of a biblical character, and of course, biblical character in the Bible that always 
put his foot in his mouth. That, that means that he would say things that sometimes just didn't make a lot of sense. And, and if you think of some biblical characters, one that always comes to mind for me is Peter. Peter would always be saying things that exactly didn't kind of jive with everything else that was going on there. He, he would just start spouting things. I do that sometimes, you know, like when devil tell me something and then I'll just start talking and, and, and I'll say something and I'm like, why did I just say that? You know, Peter did this a lot. And, and so one time when they were in the upper room and Jesus is about ready to go out to the Garden of Gethsemane and, and, and eventually be crucified, he's talking and, and he's talking with Peter. And I want all of us to go in our Bibles to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. I'm going to give you a moment because we're, we're, we went from Joshua in the Old Testament. Now we're in the New Testament, John chapter 13, and it's uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, so the fourth book in the Bible. John chapter 13, and we're going to start with verse number 36. I'm having fun. There's nobody here. I, I'm talking to a camera. I hope I'm talking to you, but this is a lot of fun. I love church. I love when there's people here. But you know what? We are ministering to people. And I think that's awesome. Get up and worship during these times. Listen during these times. Take some notes. God loves us. Amen. John 13, verse 36. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Because Jesus talked about leaving. Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you could not follow me now. But you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can't I now follow you, not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. And, and I want to just emphasize that a little bit. Lord, why can't I follow you right now? I am willing. There's, there's multiple versions of the Bible that, that say this. I am willing. I will lay everything down for you. You got to be careful what you say, especially when you're talking to Jesus. Jesus who knows our hearts. Jesus who could read our minds. Jesus who knows our spirits. You're going to say things like that. You got to be careful. I'm going to lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. Truly, truly, the rooster will not crow till you deny me three times. I can't imagine how that hit Peter. That must have hit him like a ton of bricks. Wait, this is Peter. I am Peter. You know, I'm the fisherman. I've been following you now for three years. I'm going to lay my life down for you. And now you're telling me that I'm not going to lay my life down for you? I wonder how it, it affected him. I wonder what he thought. I wonder if he said, I'm going to prove him wrong. I am not going to let this happen. Be careful what you say. This happened, I have a story. This happened about 30 years ago. I know it looked that old, but it had to be 30 plus years ago because I was in high school, senior in high school. We won nine football games. We only lost one and we barely made it in the playoffs. I know today everybody makes it in the playoffs just by showing up, it seems like, especially here in Nevada. There's a lot of, but that's another story. So we made it in the playoffs and we, before every game, we had a, a team dinner, a team dinner, yeah. So we had spaghetti, because we're in Ohio, everybody has spaghetti. And it was really good. And I remember Sean, and if he's watching, he might say, I don't remember this, and I can't remember how I remember this. Sean, who sat across from the table, said, it's been a great year. We've done so good. I have never, one time this year, been beaten deep, meaning like a quarterback wasn't able to give a long pass and, and beat me deep and for that person to score. I'm going, yeah, that's true. You haven't been deep, beat deep all year. So it's, it's, it's six nothing. We're up at halftime. We're up into the third quarter, six nothing. And almost at the end of the third quarter, the quarterback for the other team goes back, puts up a pass. It's like 40 yards, and, and high school quarterbacks can only throw about 40 yards. And this ball goes right past Sean into the receiver, and the receiver goes in for a touchdown. He said, for 10 games, I never got beat deep. And the one time where he wasn't supposed to get beat deep, he got beat deep. Be careful what comes out of your mind because the moment you brag or the moment that you say, I will never, that could come back to bite you. That can come back. And you're, then you're going to have to say, oh, I'm sorry. Or I didn't mean it. 
Just be careful what you say. But Peter said it. He put it out there. He said, you know what? I'm, I, I'm never going to deny you. I will, I will die with you if I have to die with you. So let's go to Luke. One book back, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke chapter 22, verse 56. Luke 22, verse 56. I'll give you a second to go there. Jesus is uh, now, the Garden of Gethsemane is over. The crowd came out and they, they took him into the courtyard. He's been tried. He's been beaten now a couple times. And, and Peter's there uh, in, in the courtyard watching this whole event take place. Verse number 50, or verse 55 says this. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light, looking closely at him, said, This man was also with them, pointing at Peter. Verse 57, But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. Okay, I'm going to finish that, but think about this for a moment. It's a little girl. Why are you afraid of a little girl who can't do anything? The first opportunity that he had to make it right, to do what he said, to be bold, he cowers to a little girl. I don't know him. Woman, he's yelling. Woman, I don't know him. Verse 58. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, I love how scripture is so clear, still another ins insisted, saying, certainly this man also was with them, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you are talking about. I wish that in life these situations never happened to us. But I know there are some watching today that have made a commitment to serve Christ with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their soul, and then when they're confronted with someone, they kind of fail a little bit, just like Peter did, and say, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I'm not a Christian. I, I don't really know. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't tease me. Don't, don't mess with me. We need, to, we need to, Jesus says, if you're embarrassed with me in this life, when you come to heaven, it's going to be different. We can't be embarrassed here. We need to proclaim Jesus here on this earth. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. I really want you to get verse 61. Every time I read this, my heart sinks a little bit. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. So I always thought Jesus wasn't in this area. But Luke says, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Now, we could think of a lot of things that are going through Jesus' mind at this time. Peter's denying me. He says he was never going to deny me. I told you you were going to... You know, we can't put words in Jesus' mouth. All we know is that at that moment he turned and looked at Peter. I, I, I just can't imagine how Peter felt at that moment when he promised the Lord that he wasn't, go he he wasn't going to deny him, he would follow him to the ends of the earth. Jesus told him he was going to deny him. And right there, he denied him three times. And not only that, he had to look at the eyes of his Lord. I, I, I want to stop for 20 seconds. Look, Jesus loves you, like I said earlier, so much. Don't be afraid to go to God when something is going on in your life. He loves you in such an incredible way. We're seeing it now. We're going to see it even more in a little bit. He loves you in such an incredible way. And even though you may have failed, he is with you. There is nothing in this passage that says he looked and said, I told you or I knew you were going to do that. You're just a failure. It just says he looked at Peter. We need to be able to go to God no matter what is going in our lives and say, Lord, we've messed up and believe that God is going to forgive us and he wants us to be, make it better. Verse 62 says, And Peter went out and wept bitterly. I always thought, what does that wept bitterly mean? And, and the only illustration I can get is that when my dad passed away, I remember crying for, for four days almost when I went back to see him in Ohio because of the hurt that the missing, the, the, 
the, I couldn't even say bye to him. He was just gone, and I just couldn't stop crying. And, and that's what I think Peter now, he's like, Jesus is going to go to the cross. I deny him. I'm never going to have a chance to, to make this right. Everything's going to be wrong. There's nothing going to be right. And, and then they separate, and Jesus goes to be crucified, and Peter leaves. God looks at us so much differently than we look at ourselves. And this message is not doom and gloom that God is mad at us. This message is about God loves us even in the midst of our failures, even in the midst of our struggles, even in the midst of our pain, God loves us. I'd like you to go now a couple chapters back to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. Basically, this is one of my favorite stories. I I have so many of them, but I really love this one. Luke chapter 15. So it's the, the story of the prodigal son, and, and if you read the story, which I really encourage you, I'm not going to read it all, but a son goes to the father and says, Father, I would like all the money that is owed to me, and I want to leave. And so the father doesn't say, no, you shouldn't do that. The father gives him all the money, and the, the son takes off. And the Bible says that the son squandered all the money and filthy living, prostitution, drinking, having parties, every dime went somewhere. He basically spent every dime that he had. And, and I'm going to pick up the story in Luke chapter 15. He is in a pig pen feeding pigs, and he wasn't even able to eat what the pigs were eating, which is hard for me to understand. Couldn't you take a little nibble? (laughs) Couldn't you get something? But the Bible says he couldn't even fill his belly with the pods that the pigs were eating. So we're going to pick up the story in Luke 15, verse 20. And he rose and came to his father. So this boy rises and says, I am going to go to my father. Not knowing exactly what's going to happen, he said, maybe he'll forgive me. But what, listen to this church, but while he was still a long way off, I don't understand how this works. While he was a long way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. I I want you to think about that for a moment. This son squandered everything that he had. He spent everything that he had. And now he's going back hoping maybe just to get a little forgiveness from the Father. No, Jesus says, from a long way off. That shows me, listen, that God was looking for him. God was, had to, you had to be watching out for him to say, hey, that's my, here's the cool part. Not only was he looking for him, he expected him to come back home. Prodigal, if you're out there right now and you're not serving God and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, God is watching. He's waiting for you to come back. He wants you to come back. We want you to come back. This is your time to come back. If that's you, you need to start taking off and going towards your father. So he sees it for a long way back. He runs down there and he gives him a hug. He probably smelled like pig stuff. I don't know what that smells like, but he probably smelled bad. The father's hugging him, embracing him, and saying, welcome back, my son. You see, God didn't look at the failures. God didn't look at the missing money. God didn't look at all the sin. He just knew that his son was back. Now, the story goes on to talk about the older brother, and I'm not going to really go into that. But sometimes, sometimes other people aren't going to feel like we feel. I'm reading a book called 10 Ways to Move from a believer to a disciple and it's really good it's called 10 qualities that move you from a believer to a disciple and there's a part in the in the uh, book where it's talking about moral living that that disciples should be living moral lives and he uses two different words he says there's there's when we sin there is shame and then there there's guilt And he says that when we sin, if we feel shame, it's basically that we just felt bad for getting caught for what we did. And we don't really change. We're just kind of upset for a little bit. Uh, There was once when we bought a brand new, brand new Astrovan. I know, so cool, back in the 90s. We bought a brand new Astrovan, white Astrovan. 
And I, we lived in an apartment that had those poles, like you pulled into the parking garage and it had a covering and there was poles there. One day I was leaving and I was in a little bit of a hurry and I backed out and all I heard was I was like, oh crud. I hope that wasn't my car. I hope that was somebody else. And I looked out and, and the whole back fender is bent a little bit and scratched and I'm like, how am I going to tell my precious wife, we've only been married for four or five years, that I just messed up basically her car, our car, by scratching it this bad. I felt shame, and, and I said, you know what? I have to get over it, because I know that she loves me so much, it's going to be okay. And I went, and we took care of all those things, and, and, and it was fine. When she said, it's okay, we'll get it fixed, you don't know how good I felt. But at that moment, I had the opportunity to say, I, I can't even go to her. I'm not going to go to her. I just panic and all these things. I said, no, I'm going to take it to her. Even though I feel bad right now, even though there's some shame for messing up the car, I'm going to go to her. The other word that he uses is guilt. When we feel guilty, we want to do something about it. And he says, that's the attitude we should have when we sin. Not the shame for, for getting caught, but guilt saying, hey, I am guilty. I need to do something about it. I want to change. And go to God and say, I'm sorry for the sin that's in my life. See, when we fail or walk in this disobedience, God is wanting, looking at us, and he wants us to come to him and say, hey, Lord, I am sorry. I want to turn. I want to do something different, not just feel shame and walk and do the same thing. Here's what the author says. Guilt can lead to a wonderful restoration of our intimacy with God and the experience of joy and power, but shame crushes the spirit. Shame crushes the spirit. So I want to reach out to moms and dads too. When, when your son or daughter comes to you, don't shame them. That just crushes their spirit. Say, hey, it's okay that you broke that. It's okay that you messed up. We're going to get through that. If you shame them and say, that is so stupid, how can you do that? Can you imagine if the father ran to the son and said, you are so dumb, you spent every dime that I have, every penny, and you've wasted it on all that stuff? You're just an idiot? Can you imagine how he felt? No, he hugged him. He embraced him. When we fail, God is there for us. Parents, guardians, when, you, when your child fails, don't shame them. Love them. Care for them. Hold them. Say, it's going to be okay. We can't let failure a lot. We, we have to let, let failure, those times when we are down on our knees, we have to allow that to push us to Jesus and say, I know Jesus loves me. Jesus is there for me. Jesus is, is going to help me. So Jesus is in the grave. Peter went away. Jesus went to the grave. And he's there for three days. And Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and, and Salome, came to the tomb to anoint the body. You know the story. It was just Easter. I'm sure that you, you read the story or you, or you heard the story before. And so they're wondering how the stone was going to be rolled away. The stones rolled away. And in this particular passage, in this particular translation, this is what it says. The, they're, they walked into the grave and they saw a man there. And here's what he says. Don't be ashamed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been risen. He is not here. See the place where they have laid him. But go tell, oh, this is so good. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. There were times where I read this passage where I just pushed it by, but then I started noticing, why does he include the and Peter? I think that's beautiful. Jesus doesn't have to, Scripture doesn't have to say that, but it's there. Go tell his disciples, and look, make sure Peter knows, I'm alive, everything's okay, it's all right, we'll deal with that later, but go tell Peter. Church, there is victory if we go to Jesus, even in the midst of our failures, even in the midst of our shame, even in the midst of our, our fallings. If we go to him, he loves us so much. First, he's going to give us a big old hug, and he's going to say, it's okay. But Jesus, you don't know what I did. I did this, and I did that. It's okay. Jesus, I just failed you. 
it's okay. Go tell my disciples, hey, and Peter. I love that part. And Peter. There are times where we're not going to make it. There are times when we're going to just do our own thing. There are times when we're going to act worse than the prodigal son. I want you to know today that God is for you, and he loves you, and he wants you to run to him. Failure is not fatal until you quit, and I don't want you to quit because God doesn't want you to quit, and he wants you to succeed. It doesn't matter if you're in your house, and you've been in your house for the last month, and you feel like a failure, nothing's going on. Jesus loves you, and he wants you to keep on going. Even though people in the world may tell you that you're a failure, don't listen to him. Look to God and say, Lord, I want to change. I want to be more like you and just walk where he wants you to walk. I really love this message because like when I first started the message, I said there's a lot of things in my life that I just got to get right. And I wish that I could stand up here and say that I never fail. But if you had looked at my last week, there'd be a lot of opportunities to say, yes, there, there is, we, we, we do fail. So I want to leave you with a couple things. First of all, we're going to fail. Don't get down on yourself. Don't punish yourself. Don't be mad all the time. Say, how can I get better from this failure? Second thing is failure doesn't have to be fatal. Failure needs to be brought to Jesus. And that's the third thing. Jesus cares for us and is ready to forgive us. Jesus is there and he wants to forgive us. And, and lastly, but don't live in, in the failure, but live in the victory that Christ wants to give you. And when you repent, when you change, when you move and you go a different direction and you go on a different path, God is able to work in your life in incredible ways and show you awesome things. I don't know what your name is. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're sitting right now. But I know God knows you and he's standing by you. Even though there may be times of failure, times of victory are so much greater and they are coming. I want to pray for you. So if you may be walking in that failure state, you might be walking in that shame state, you might say, Pastor, I, I am just down in the dumps and I can't figure it out. You're, you're who I want to pray for. If you were here, I'd say, close your eyes and let's raise our hands and, and let's just pray. But you know what? God sees your heart and he knows what you need right now. So I'd like to pray for you. Heavenly Father, you see those that, are, that have listened, Lord. You see those that are sitting in their homes, maybe at a kitchen table. Maybe they wandered from the message and they came back. God, I don't know, but you do, Lord. I pray that you would just be with them right now, Father, and that you would minister to the place that they were at. God, if they are living in failure, if they are just walking and thinking that their whole life is failing, God, that you would lift them up and encourage them right now. Let them run to you. Let them ask for forgiveness. And more importantly than that, let them change and do something different. And let that failure be a reminder of how awesome you are and what they're going to do in this life. God, we love you. And we pray that you would do something wonderful in everybody that listened this morning or this afternoon or this evening. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Before I let you go, one more thing. If you don't know Jesus, now is a perfect time to turn your life over to Jesus. Ask him into your heart. I want to pray. I just want you, if you've never done this before, we don't know who these are touching. You might say, Pastor Rocky, you're speaking to me and I've come to church a lot. That's true. But we don't know who else this is touching. If you look online, it's going a lot of different places. So we want to just pray for you and we want to believe that this is your day where you're going to accept Christ. So if that's you today, you've never made a decision to come to Jesus. The Bible says he's the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me the wages of sin is death but the free gift of god is what eternal life through christ so this is for you and if this is for you i really want you to mean this let's bow our heads heavenly father we pray that you would just do something wonderful in every life that is turning their heart over for you please say this simple prayer dear god help me to change from this point up until now i've been a sinner but i want to change and i want to go after you Lord, I, I repent. I change my ways. I want to turn from those ways and turn to you. I pray, dear God, that you would do something wonderful in my life, that you would minister in powerful ways. God, that you would do something awesome. I love you, Lord. I praise you, and I give you the glory in Jesus' wonderful name.
Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for, for tuning in. We know this is difficult. We know that this is not exactly how we want to do church. But you know what? God is doing something new. God, God is doing something fresh right now. And we need to say, Lord, instead of bemoaning, instead of complaining, let's just see where God takes us. Let's see what God does. So I want you to pray with your church, with your pastor, Pastor Angela. Let's pray together and believe God that when this all ends, whatever this is right now, we don't want to say new normal, whatever it is, when this all ends, that God is where we're going God's way and we see something awesome happen in this world. Have a wonderful day and we will see you next time we see you. Awesome, great message there, Pastor Rocky. Uh, as a reminder, this week, uh, Connect Groups will be starting up again. Uh, we will be covering Philippians. So if you are not connected or in a group, please contact us. We will get you connected. Uh, we are looking forward to seeing you. It's all through a Zoom Connect Group. So as long as you have a cell phone and the internet, we sh will be able to see you and hear from you. Yeah, that, that's going to be great. So we hope that you would take advantage of that. Hey, friends, uh, will you just uh, stand one more time and just put your hands up like this? We just want to uh, declare a blessing over you and your family. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you. We can't wait uh, for you guys to tune in next week. Have a great, great week. God bless you. We'll see you.